Good morning, sci-fi fans. We are here to talk all about the Last Jedi panel that we just watched. We just saw it at the Star Wars Celebration live feed. Just saw the first trailer. This is Jason. So good. So good. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Mike, and uh, we are just amped, pumped. We watched this trailer. I think we were wound, paused, watched four or five times. At least, at least. Um, maybe seven, eight, nine, ten. And there are a lot of little nuggets in there we mm. missed on the first watch. We missed on the second watch. We missed on the third watch. I think every time we watched it, we picked up something new. Yeah. There is there's a lot of stuff going on in there. Um, so do that. Make sure you do that. We're going to talk about what we saw. I'm going to let Jason go first because he was catching things so amazingly that I didn't catch, mm -hmm. like little background voices. Um, why don't we start with, we don't have to start right at the beginning if you're okay, because I really want to hear, you noticed, and I didn't notice it till the fourth time when you pointed it out, there was three people on that cliff when mm -hmm. Ray's doing all the lightsaber stuff. Yeah, well, they they kind of take that shot and they pan it around, and at first we see what I'm, I'm guessing is Luke and Ray training, and she's swinging the saber around, getting getting to know her lightsaber. And as they pan that around the cliff, there's a third figure there. And we know from the end of The Force Awakens that she arrived on Aktu, yeah. I think the name of the island is, um, with Chewbacca and with R2. That third figure that we see in the trailer, though, that doesn't look like Chewbacca. It doesn't look big enough, tall enough, hairy enough to be Chewbacca. So, I mean, <clears throat> a lot of supposition could go into who that might be. But uh, I loved what you said just before we went on the air. How cool well, would that be if well, it just was? Be, just before, uh, let's go back to yesterday in that 40th anniversary panel. They, bought, they brought back Hayden Christensen. So cool. Which is great to see him back involved in Star Wars. When they brought him out, you could tell that it meant a lot to him. He looked like he was getting a bit emotional just from all the love that he's receiving. Because if you read the newspapers, everyone hates Hayden Christensen. I love but him. But Star Wars fans, we love the guy. Yeah, he's awesome. He's awesome. And Anakin was a great character. And it's possible that third figure could be a Force ghost. Maybe Hayden Christensen. Just throwing that out there. That would be amazing. Now... I would love that. That would be my ultimate yes if it is Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker Force Ghost. But I think it's more likely that it's Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan's trying to help Luke train Rey. That's just my thinking. Yeah, possibly. Very possibly. Uh, we did hear Obi-Wan in the trailer. Absolutely. And I missed this again. Jason heard it. 
Um, what did he? What do you think he said? Well, okay. So as the trailer's going on, we see the back of Leia's head, and we hear a whisper, "You're my only hope." Yeah, and um, that was Leia's we, definitely her voice. We see Darth Vader's looks like to be crushed helmet. Looks like Kylo, Which you think went, Kylo went nuts yeah. again and crushed his grandfather's helmet. Yeah, and I think at that point it does sound like we hear uh, Alec Guinness's Kenobi say he was seduced by the dark side. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously talking about Vader, talking about Kylo. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if they're throwing Kenobi into the trailer, then just very possibly maybe that's Kenobi standing on the cliff helping out train Ray. I would his daughter. I would love <laughs> <laughs> I would love it more, though, if it was Anakin or granddaughter. Yeah. I mean, either way. Well, after we hear Kenobi's voice, we hear Yoda's voice in the next scene. So cool. Sur surrounds us, binds us, talking about the Force. Very heavy Force trailer. I think, I think, and my hope is we're going to get a Force Ghost Council with Yoda, with Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan, and with Hayden Christensen as Anakin. That would be unbelievable. Uh, I'm going to have to wear Depends to the movie because <laughs> if that happens, it's going to be all of my kids' dreams come true. Mm -hmm. Like, as a child fan of Star Wars, that would be the ultimate. Now, let's get to the beginning of this trailer and yeah. just the feel of it. Um, we also talked about this before we went on the air. Um, Jason had mentioned about the Force Awakens trailer when we got that. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? How it, it had to yeah. reintroduce us to the Star Wars world? Yeah, like when, when the... Force Awakens trailer, and I'm not talking about the teaser, I'm talking about the one that we got at Celebration. Chewie, we're home. Chewie, we're home. And it had that real nostalgic, emotional connection for everyone, you know, and it almost brought you to tears because it brought us back to that place in Star Wars that we all love so much, that original trilogy, Han Solo, Chewbacca, everything. Uh, this one didn't hit that same note, but that doesn't matter because... The Force Awakens brought us back to that place, but now we're here. We're entrenched yes, in Star Wars. We are deep into it, and now we're going to do some new things with this. And it, it was actually very surprising to me the tone that this trailer struck. It was I mean, dark, it was sinister, yet there was yeah. little bits of hope in there, like when Rey is coming out of that oh, cave little, oh that and the, the shot with all the little pebbles starting to float up yeah it almost uh, reminded me i know this is going to sound horrible that i'm comparing it to batman v superman i thought the same thing <laughs> the yeah. top of the coffin at the end that yeah, disappointed yeah. me so much yeah. this did not disappoint yeah exactly the uh um what, what was i going to say the, uh, the the tone of the trailer and how when we are when we're left at the end of the force awakens there's that sense of hope. Okay, she's found Luke Skywalker. She's handing him the Excalibur, and he's going to train her, and it's going to be amazing, and blah, blah, blah. No. Nope. Luke is broken. He is torn. Uh, Ray, or I should say Daisy, hinted at this in the trailer, how, she's like, how she said something to the fact that... I wrote, it's, I wrote it down. It's not always great to meet your heroes. So she said, sometimes when you meet your heroes, you are disappointed. Exactly. So she's met her hero, she's disappointed. And the fact that we end this trailer on Luke saying, we must, the Jedi must end. The Last Jedi, the title, yeah. everything, he, he's done. He is the Last Jedi. And so whether that's, you know, he, he tried to start a new Jedi Order, and that obviously failed. I mean, it failed because of Kylo's turn. Well, and let's talk about that one point in the trailer where you see him kneeling again next to R2. Yep. And I, we have differing opinions on this. Mm -hmm. um, love to know what you guys think. Tell us in the comments section. I think that the Force vision from The Force Awakens... <laughs> uh, was part back looking back, but I think she was also seeing into the future because mm -hmm. I don't think she could control the force and it was just flooding into her future stuff, past stuff. So I think she was seeing the future and now we're seeing it in The Last Jedi, what she saw as the future. Okay. You disagree though. I disagree. Uh, the shot that we're talking about in this trailer, uh, we see Luke Skywalker dropping to his knees right next to R2 and there's a, a building on fire in front of him. We're relating that back to the... Uh, the force flash, we'll call it, in The Force Awakens, where we see Luke reach out his robotic hand and touch R2, uh, which we famously saw in the earlier trailers. 
um, we're connecting those two. So we're both saying that that's a force flash, whether it's force forward or force back. Yeah. Uh, he's saying force forward, possibly. I'm saying possibly force back. I'm thinking that's the moment where Kylo turned, or I should say Ben turned, and destroyed that new Jedi Order. And the temples and on the flames. Temples. Yeah, so I'm thinking that that's, that's all the moment where the new Jedi Order came to an end. Yeah. Um, so then we get into probably my, well, my second favorite part of this trailer <laughs> um, is the action. So we get those mm. resistance uh, craft going across the sand and the red, <sighs> the red dirt is being tossed up. And then you you pointed out again, I missed this, because it goes so fast, that they were flying towards the Imperial walkers. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely see there was something on the horizon, and it sure looked like walkers. I yeah. mean, they, were, they had the same silhouette of walkers. I'm 100% I'm sure I'm that's sure they're going to be a new version of walkers. They're not going to be this classic AT-AT, at at whatever you call it. They're not going to be that version. Like we did get the ATACT in Rogue One, so they're. I think it's going to evolve into something different. Well, and to me, they looked like the four-legged walkers from yeah, it, from Hoth, like the ones on Hoth. Yeah, it certainly looked like a taller version, like the ATAT, as opposed to the. Uh, I, I thought ATAT was the two-leggeds from Return of the uh, Jedi yeah, and that's Ender. ATST. Right. Okay. Um, th and then there's the walkers that we got in the Clone Wars that had like the six legs, but they were kind of short and stumpy. Yeah. Uh, these are definitely the taller versions, so they are some version of the AT, AZ, or whatever they're going to call it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and those fighters, though, that we see flying and dragging, and the, the sand gets kicked up into red, um, for some reason, it doesn't hit me that that's resistance. They seem a little broken and disheveled. I mean, exactly. The resistance, the resistance is broken. The resistance is broken and disheveled. But they, I mean, you they see. They killed Hosnian Prime. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Like, but, but the resistance wasn't really part of the Republic. You know, they were acting on their own accord. But I mean, if you see yeah. the X Wings and everything that fly into battle, they're in relatively good shape. You know, okay. they might not be the most current fighter, but they're in good shape and they're tip top. They've got their mechanics working around the clock. These things look like the guy kind of comes down, hits the ground. It looks like the wings kind of flutter a little bit. They look like possibly whoever's there on that dry lake planet we're going to call it um or it's not necessarily part of the resistance or could it be a another <clears throat> faction like uh sabine's people wow yeah totally i mean the everything like maybe that another faction rebels. joins yeah. the resistance That's a good what do they call the mandalorians yeah the mandalorians maybe it's the mandalorians i'm just throwing that out there i just thought of it while you were talking yeah um doesn't look like mando type ships to me no but i i like your point of how in Rebels they've set up that there's all these different factions and they do kind of come together. But in The Force Awakens, we actually do see some of those factions want to break off because they don't agree. Yeah. Um, or I'm sorry, was that in Rogue One? No, that was in Rogue One. That was in Rogue One where they kind but of. But we don't off. know what the Resistance yeah. is like right now. We got very little story of the Resistance. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, there could be extra little pockets that want to rebel but don't want to join the, join the official Resistance. So they could be out there on. Dry Lake Red planets and doing their thing. So let's talk about Finn in the medical unit. Um, it, it looked a lot like the medical unit they put Anakin in on Mustafar because there was no water in it. There was no water in it. it. To me, it almost looked like he was laying down, like it was more of a yeah hyperbaric chamber. And I saw some little medical numbers on the side, so it was yeah. life readings. Um, that, to me, says a lot that mm -hmm. I thought we were going to go from Oct 2 where she's reaching out the lightsaber, they might talk a little bit, and then maybe something like Rogue One where it says six months has passed. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen because then they're going to flash to the where Finn's recovering. So I don't know if we're ever going to move anything with a time jump. I it, Everything to me right. says this is just a complete continuation where yeah. The Force Awakens left off. Well, they've said very early on that we start out right where The Force Awakens left off. And yeah, I don't think that there's going to be a time jump. We see Finn in full recovery. Um, something that Rian Johnson actually said during the panel, how 
uh, Starkiller base was destroyed, but Hosnian Prime was destroyed. So the the galaxy is in complete chaos, and the First Order wants to jump on that. They want to take full advantage of that as quickly as possible. And we see, you know, Poe's running towards his X-wing, and then big explosion. You know, they're under attack. So I don't think they're going to let up at all. It's yeah. just going to be pedal to the metal. Now let's talk about my favorite part of this trailer, and that's Darth Vader's smashed mask. Okay. okay. You think Kylo went on another <clears throat> hissy fit rampage yeah. and just smash it because maybe Anakin's not talking to him. Maybe Anakin's talking to Rey. Right. Ooh, yes. So yes, he's yes. pissed that he finds out that Anakin had his redemption story at the end of Return of the Jedi. And he's like, I'm not following you anymore. I don't believe in you. I, and then maybe that is the snap. Maybe, mm. you know, I know Kylo was pretty on edge before and needed meds, but <laughs> this might be the thing that sends him right off the deep end. What do right. you think about that? Okay, well, just a little uh, hypothesizing here. So um, he goes back to Snoke to get some more training. Uh, Snoke is impressed that he followed through and killed his father. Okay, you've killed your father, but you need to detach yourself from all of your familial binds okay including your grandfather because grandfather. you know what you didn't know about your grandfather you read in the archives that he killed the younglings and he turned to the dark side but he's actually the one that brought down the fall of the sith so your father actually flip-flopped at the very end and he was pulled to the light side i don't want that for you so you need to disconnect yourself from him so then he goes in and like you're saying you did what you turned to the light side so yeah, now are you helping Ray on the other side? Are you reaching out through the force? Ah, I'm done with you. He destroys the helmet. And I think that'll be the biggest catalyst turning point of Kylo Ren's story arc in this movie, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my, my bet. Again, we know nothing. We're just, this is our yeah. theories. <laughs> Um, that's really all I wanted to chat about the trailer. Is there anything else mm -hmm. in the trailer other than maybe what you think might be the force tree? Uh, the yeah. platform with the light shining on yeah, it. Yeah, to, to me, it's a it's a strange shot because I mean we see all these kind of wooden things and it looks to be a platform with a light beam coming in. Uh, it almost looks like a top down shot, like we're looking down the tree, but that platform looks pretty level. So it's it's kind of like a tree house. What's going on? Yeah, like I said it's house. like a tree house. Um, <laughs> to me, it actually looks like we're inside of the tree, and that's just maybe a, you know an opening of the tree that. We're getting a light beam to come through there. And, I mean, they immediately connect that shot to the that old Jedi, that old Jedi manuscript or manual. I forgot about that. Yeah. The book with the Jedi symbol. Now, I had read somewhere a while ago that when Luke, the first thing Luke did after Return of the Jedi was go to, um, oh crap, the planet that's an entire city. Coruscant. Think. Went to Coruscant yeah. and went into the old Jedi Temple to see what artifacts he could find. Maybe that's a book that he took from there. And then that book maybe led him to the different Jedi um, temples where, you know, they show in Rebels where Kanan takes Ezra to that one on Lothal. Mm -hmm. Maybe that book had a list of where they all were and he that, that was the beginning of his quest. Okay. And may, that again, just theorizing. Maybe that's why they're showing the book because maybe in there that's what's been guiding him to try to find more. Um, and then we see at the end where he goes, "It's time for the Jedi to end." Right. Maybe he just says, "You know what? The Jedi, like you've always said, the Jedi had it wrong. It's right. not the light or the dark. We can meet in the middle." And yeah, I'm, I like everything you're saying there. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna expand on that a little bit. I don't think he went to Coruscant. I think that he found that manuscript or that book in Yoda's hut. I think Yoda oh, brought it with him. Oh, wow. And when he went back to Dagobah, off screen, we don't see it in Jedi. Or do we? Uh, Maybe they'll show a flashback. Ryan Johnson's notorious oh. for his flashbacks. Back to Dagobah. Um, I think in Jedi, he probably grabbed that thing off the shelf. Hey, this looks like a good book and brought it with him. Um, yeah, I've always talked about how the Jedi had it wrong and how Luke got it right and that compassion for his father. He had that compassion, which was able to pull Vader back from the dark side. Um, so I think Luke went forward with that 
and in his new Jedi order, he was like, okay, well, let's bring in more compassion. Let's, you know, let's have some connection. You know, it's not wrong to be married and have kids, right? Um, <laughs> but there, it's it's a tough it's a tough balancing act, right? Because you know, then you have those emotional connections, which can lead you down the dark side path you know, with AKA Anakin and possibly Kylo. Um, it's a tough balancing act. So he was, you know, I think he's just at a point where it's like, you know what? The Jedi had it wrong. I can't get it right. I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. And we know for a fact that in Return of the Jedi, Luke used the dark side. He was choking the little pig guys in Jabba's palace. He yeah. he tapped into his hate when he was hammering Darth Vader in that final battle. Um, but he knew how to balance it. Yeah, I can see that. He 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 brought in a little bit of that dark side, um, and maybe that's possible part of his his new Jedi Order downfall is maybe he was saying, you know, it, it's okay if we use the dark side as long as it's for good. Right. I was choking the pigs because I was trying to save my buddies. Yeah. And, but maybe he is such an exceptionally um, good Mar person. Marian guards, I know they're not pigs. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's maybe he's such an incredibly good person that he wasn't tempted, but Kylo sure was. Yeah. And Kylo, you know, didn't have I don't I don't know didn't have Owen and Beru as the perfect uncle and aunt raising him. Mm -hmm. Who knows why Luke could use the dark side, but I, I really think that will play into why Kylo turned dark and mm -hmm. betrayed Luke. And and certainly we can't ignore what what they've been building towards and what they've been giving us with all the new Force stuff. Uh, we've got the uh, the Force Church. Yeah. We've got the Force Church on Jakku. We've got the Guardians of the Will in, you know, Chirrut Imwe. Uh, in Rogue One. In Rogue One. We've got uh, the Bindu. From Rogue Rebels. One. You know, the Bindu saying, yes, there's the light side and there's the dark side. But, you know, there's this place that they meet in the middle. You know, so I think all those things aren't put there for nothing, right? Star Wars doesn't do anything for nothing exactly. except have AP5 sing. <laughs> that was the only thing that was for nothing. <laughs> Dave Filoni disappointment. Filler, filler, filler. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think they're giving us all these little bits and pieces, you know, just to say, uh, yes, there was the Sith and the Jedi, and that was all. That was all that there was, and that was it. Um, but they're saying now there is so much more to what's going on. Uh, <clears throat> we've never heard uh, Kylo or Snoke or any of these new bad guys referred to as Sith. No. Nope. So they're done with the Sith. That's over. That's that whole Sith thing. Those guys, they ruled the galaxy for a long time, so bravo, but they got it wrong. Let's let's do something new with our dark side powers. And I think I think Luke is coming to that. Yeah. You know, the the Jedi uh, they, you know, were guardians of the peace for so long. The guardians of peace and justice, but uh, they got it wrong. And I got it wrong. So let's do something new with it. Let's take it in a different direction now i know you've been trying to avoid the hell out of spoilers yeah are you okay if i bring yeah, up a spoiler ahead. about yeah, snoke ahead. this is a theory slash spoiler empire's end the okay. third book of the aftermath trilogy there are major <clears throat> hints in there about snoke's origin okay and what i'm getting out of it i'm not going to get into any details because okay. in case you want to read the book but it seems like snoke is nobody he has been around for a very long time um, he has been on the outer edges watching what happened with Vader and Palpatine watching what happened with Anakin and he was waiting for the right time to come in mm -hmm. and he waited till that all played itself out that's what they're hinting at that he's not Darth Plagueis he's not any of those things and and does that make sense to you that's what they've been saying from the start I mean uh, you listen to uh, Pablo Hidalgo and J.J. Abrams, and they've said, you know, Pop, Snoke's nobody. Okay. We don't know who Snoke is. And no one wants to believe them. Everyone wants to believe that Snoke is Kitster, but... <laughs> I... Snoke is Jar Jar. <laughs> Snoke is Jar Jar. Um, but I can see that. I mean, they've they've already established that there are these other Force users, you yeah. know? We thought, oh, well, Jedi, Sith, that's it. I mean, if you're not Jedi or Sith, you're not a Force user. There's Bindu, you know, this guy that lives in the middle. 
definitely a force user. Even Maz Kanata. Force user. Force, she's a force user. She hasn't done anything with it. You know, she, uh, she may not be a Jedi, but she knows the force. She knows something of it, but she hasn't done with anything with it. So maybe Snoke, he's, he's developed it. Instead of just running a, a cantina bar on some off world, he's like dedicated himself, you know, maybe instead of a, a force church, it's a dark side church yeah. or something. And he's dedicated himself to, to learning the dark arts. And now he's going to pass that on. But yeah, I could totally see him being, you know, on some off world in the, in the outer rims or the inner core or something, just hanging out in the background, waiting for his moment to shine. Okay. So let us know what you thought of the last Jedi trailer. Um, want to hear in the comments section for me, uh, everything i wanted it was oh, yeah. everything i wanted out of a first trailer because i don't feel like it gave away any of the story right and i don't want any of the story i love this trailer same oh absolutely uh, one thing i just want to add um i wasn't sure about uh, ryan johnson coming on as a as the director for star wars i really uh, liked looper uh his movie brick uh, I think that was his first moon. Uh, those are the only two I've seen of him, but I like them both. And they're both of those are very heavy stories, convoluted, lots of things happening. Uh, after seeing this trailer, this guy is the perfect director for this. Yeah. This is going to be a story with a lot of twists and turns. A lot of things are going to take us by surprise. Uh, but they're all going to fold in on each other to give us some answers. We're not going to get all of the answers in this movie. But I think that Ryan Johnson is going to do a fantastic job with this. So now let's talk about the elephant in the room at Celebration. We're going to kind of go into the Celebration stuff now. <laughs> and that was Princess Leia. She was missing. Yeah. It was sad. I, I don't know. Did you get to watch yesterday the tribute they did? I did. I was not. Um, I'm not ashamed to admit I cried. Yeah. I had tears. It was moving the way at the end John Williams comes out and they play her yeah, theme. Fantastic. Um, Absolutely. There wasn't a dry eye in the house there. No. And I, yeah. I was here sitting downstairs in the studio just, yeah, tears were coming because it was yeah. so emotional. And I think they all feel that at Celebration this year. Somebody's missing. Something's missing. Carrie's yeah. not there. Yep. So it was great that they talked about her. It was great that in the last Jedi panel, they brought it up again mm -hmm. uh, before they got going. It seems like they're they're making a real concerted effort to include her. Yeah. You know, they, they made the, the little trailer and, uh, you know, I mean, they had George Lucas introducing that trailer. I mean, come on. Um, and like you said, they had John Williams come out, play her theme. Um, every single panel along the way, they've mentioned it somehow. And rightfully so. Exactly, rightfully so. She is a huge, huge part of Star Wars that's missing. Um, but it's great that we're going to get to see her in, in Episode 8. Yeah, and Episode 9. So the news just nine. came out. I heard that. They're not doing, um, the, uh, they're not doing any CG. They're going to take cut film footage from The Force Awakens and from The Last Jedi. And that's how they're going to bring her story to a conclusion in Episode 9. Right. I'm happy about that. Yeah. I, I told you before, I wouldn't have minded a recast, though. I don't think I would have had a problem with a recast, but I would have had a problem with CGI. Mm -hmm. um, what were your thoughts on that? Um, I, I, recasting her maybe as a younger right. Princess Leia, I don't think I'd have an issue with. Trying to recast her now as an older General Leia, it, it's going to be tough, especially after... Uh, Especially after the performance that they say that she's giving in episode eight. But what if you do Meryl Streep? Come on, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, you, she can do no a wrong, huge right? iconic <laughs> yeah. actress yep. to come in. You say Meryl Streep's going to be Princess Leia in episode nine. I'm on board. Yeah, for sure. I'm to homage, it would have to be someone uh, with that you know level of expertise yes. to bring it. But yeah, I mean, okay, if they cast Meryl Streep as Princess Leia, I'm on board. Okay. okay, so now let's talk about Kelly Marie Tran. Yeah. Uh, the new person they introduced in the last Matt, Jedi Matt panel. The technician. So Rose, <laughs> part of <laughs> Rose, she's part of the Resistance and a maintenance worker. Mm -hmm. This is cool. They said that she uh, doesn't want to be a part of the fighting. She's not interested in it. She just she's a maintenance worker. She's the person that's keeping those X wings in really great shape. Yeah. <laughs> um, but somehow she gets pulled in. Yeah. That was a nice little nugget. 
Mm-hmm. I liked it. Yeah, no, I think that's great. It's, I mean, it's kind of Luke. Luke's a moisture farmer, and he gets pulled into this. Obviously, he's got a history, and you know, possibly Rose doesn't have a history, but yeah, she's just kind of this background character that, like you said, doesn't really want to fight but wants to help out, and she gets pulled into it, and she goes along on the adventure as well. So that was cool. Then Mark Hamill. I love him. He comes out. The audience explodes. He is such a showman. And he says, uh, he went up to Ryan Johnson and said, I'm terrified of not holding up to the legacy of Star Wars. Because this movie, um, he goes, there's a little bit of me. And then Kathleen says, okay, I got to stop you there. And she says, Luke is so significantly important to The Last Jedi. And then Luke comes back and says, so when I said to Ryan Johnson, I'm terrified, he looks back at him and says, yeah, so am I. Yeah. (laughs) What do you take from all that? Like the, the weight on his shoulders to make this. Right. Well, I mean, it, it's looking to be a Luke Skywalker movie, right? Yeah. Force Awakens was more on solo, right? So this is going to bring in a ton more Luke. Obviously from the trailer, he's broken. There's going to be an emotional range that he's going to go through and, you know, he's got to deliver that and he's definitely feeling the weight of that. And Ryan Johnson coming in, having a critically acclaimed films, but never having anything on the scale of Star Wars. They took a chance on him. We That's yeah. Disney and Lucasfilm have taken a huge risk. I think risk. it was a calculated risk. Yeah. I think he's going to be great. Um, and there's a lot of smart people like Pablo oh, Hidalgo. Yeah, exactly. They're all probably mentoring him. Oh, for sure. For sure. Dave but, Filoni. But ha- having the weight of that on your shoulders. Here, you've done some good movies. Now here, have the most successful franchise in film history. And try that. Try that out for size. And yeah, that's going to weigh on you. And and not, you know, not being a guy to BS anyone. He's like, yeah, I'm scared too. Because this is massive. This is a massive undertaking. You know, but I think together they're gonna they're gonna pull it off. And I'm sure J.J. Abrams was hanging out with him and giving oh, yeah. him advice. He's like I, he's got executive producer credit, yeah. so he's hanging around for sure. So you, they never just leave someone out to dry. Mm-hmm. They they wouldn't do that. They're Disney's too smart. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think this is the perfect movie to catapult Ryan Johnson into discussions ten years from now, where they'll compare him Steven Spielberg, mm-hmm. um, that type of director. Uh, that's what Star Wars does for everybody, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you look at uh, at what they did with Rogue One. I go back to a panel yesterday with Dave Filoni and Pablo Hidalgo. They said that they were on the set of Rogue One quite a bit. Yeah. You know, okay, so Chopper's going to be in this scene, and we're going to have the ghost in the background. Uh, so let's go hang out, and let's you know make sure they get our characters right. Right. So Huge it's, collaboration. It's a family. It's a huge collaboration. Everyone's involved. So Ryan Johnson's on, or Ryan Johnson's on set, and... Yeah, he's going to have J.J. texting him, giving him notes. He's going to have Papa Hidalgo. He's going to have Dave Filoni, you know. And George Lucas showed up on the set of Rogue One. That was cool. You know, George is not technically part of the family anymore, but he was back. Yeah. He was there yesterday. Uh, That says a lot because, you know, it seemed like there was whispers and rumors of there's maybe some hurt feelings somewhere along the way. I mean... You break up with your girlfriend, and even if the one, even if you're the one that dumped her, it still maybe hurts to see her hanging out with another guy, right? So George Lucas broke up with Star Wars um, over the prequels over because the, of the backlash that he got. All of that stuff. I mean, he sold he sold Star Wars to Disney. You know, it's he's he signed his name on, on the line, but then he sees them doing things with it and having fun with it and and, and being successful with it, and maybe he's a little like, oh. I, I'm not a part of this anymore, right? But I think that 40th panel shows he's over. He's over yeah. it. And he's back. And he, the fact that he was on the Rogue One set, the fact that he was on the panel yesterday, yeah. he's, I'm sure Ryan Johnson's got Lucas on speed dial. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's got his number there. It's just, hey, George, we're dealing a lot with the force here. I've got a couple questions for you. I'm sure that uh, he's he's there. Okay, so that was all I had for Mm -hmm. this episode. Anything else you want to wrap it up with? Anything else you want to talk about from Celebration? Um, I think I'm good. I'm I'm really looking forward to the Rebels panel tomorrow, the Mm -hmm. animated panel. Um, That, uh, after it's over tomorrow, I'm going to do another show. I'm hoping Jason has some time to pop over and we can talk about it. 
you said you didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, but that has historically the last couple of celebrations been the panel of panels. Mm -hmm. Do you think it'll do that again this year? Will it will it outshine The Last Jedi, or do you think this was just uh, too much? Yeah, no, I don't think it'll outshine The Last Jedi. I mean, I, I like Rebels. I love Rebels. Uh, they'll, I'm sure they'll show a season four yeah. trailer, uh, introduce us to some new stuff. Um, if season four is going to be it, you know, we'll probably find that out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and if it is going to be it, you know, it's there's going to be a, a build up to some sort of conclusion at the end of season four. So that's going to be in the mix there, too. Um, it's going to be exciting. I don't think it'll outweigh The Last Jedi. Uh, oh, we didn't talk about that poster. Oh, my God. I can't that, believe we almost went that, off the air with talking. That Last Jedi poster that they showed us. Oh, wow. I am getting wow. I, I am going to talk to you once we get. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to talk to you once we get a uh, image on the Internet. Mm -hmm. And you, Jason, does some really cool things with printing and design work. And mm -hmm. I need you to make me a giant poster of that. <laughs> I, I think we can do that. Okay, good, because I need that poster. That's got to go up in my basement here somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a beautiful poster. I mean, there there's kind of remnants of that original Luke Skywalker poster, him holding up the lightsaber. Uh, Ray's doing the same thing. And then, but the way it, it shines up and it's got half of Luke's face and half of Kylo's face and oh, just the, the red, dark crimson reds that it just sets the tone for the movie. It's I'm excited. Ooh. I'm excited too. But you know what? We want to know if you're excited. Let mm -hmm. us know in the comment section what you think. Uh, Jason, where can the good people find you on social media? Uh, hit me up on Instagram. I'm at Vintage Star Wars over there. You can like me, follow me, love me, hate me, do whatever. I'm there. And you can find me, Mike, uh, Sci Fi Movie Guy. Uh, I'm on Twitter and Facebook at Movie Guy Sci Fi. Or you can send me an email, Movie Guy Sci Fi at gmail.com. And for the Sci Fi Movie Guy channel, Nerds rule the world.